Hey everyone, I've got something a little bit different for you today. Today we're going to be talking about the list of unusual deaths, and it's exactly what it sounds like. Many people online have contributed to what has become an enormous compilation of all the weirdest deaths throughout history, starting with cases in antiquity and continuing all the way up to today. I'd like to go over this list with you one by one, from the very beginning, and really marvel at how crazy they are. So, naturally, let's start with the very first death on the list. Draco of Athens was the first recorded legislator in Athens in ancient Greece. He replaced the old, archaic system of laws being dictated orally and chose to write the first code of written law in the nation. The citizens appointed him to this duty, but they weren't aware of just how harsh his rules would become. This is where the term draconian laws even comes from. Many of his laws called for execution as a punishment. Steal a cabbage, death sentence. Unintentionally kill someone, death sentence. It's all the same. Not only was a death sentence applied to basically any crime now, those with debt were practically forced into slavery. In the end, though, Draco must have been fairly beloved, as his death shows. According to multiple Greek historians, Draco died in the Aegenitan Theater around 600 BC when a massive crowd was cheering his approval. According to multiple Greek historians, Draco died in the Aegenitan Theater in around 600 BC when a massive crowd was cheering in his approval. As people tended to do back in the day, they threw their hats and cloaks into the air and onto the stage, where so many landed on Draco that he was pinned to the ground and eventually suffocated under all of them. A large number of his laws were soon repealed. Number 2. Carondas Carondas was another lawgiver, oddly enough, from Sicily. He was quite celebrated and known for being very serious about his laws being carried out to the finest detail. One of the laws he wrote was to forbid anyone from bringing weapons into the public assembly. Anyone caught doing so was to be given the death sentence. A problem occurred one day when some bandit gangs began attacking some villages in the countryside. In order to request some help, Carondas entered the public assembly in order to gather up some fighters. However, after entering the assembly, he realized that he still had his own knife attached to his belt. In order to uphold his own law, he immediately ended his own life right then and there. Number 3. Arachion of Phigalia Arachion was an Olympic wrestler in ancient Greece. This brand of wrestling involved elements of boxing, wrestling, kicking, and various other forms of hand-to-hand -hand combat. It was called Pancration, and Arachion was considered to be the best there ever was. He was the winner in the 52nd Olympiad, but the 53rd would arguably be his most well-known feat. So according to multiple sources, during the final fight, his opponent grabbed him hugged him with his legs and got him into a kind of a chokehold. As Arachion was about to pass out from the chokehold, he struck his opponent in the foot. That dislocated his toe and caused him immense pain. The opponent, now giving up due to the pain in his foot, gave the hand signal that he was surrendering. But while he gave that hand signal, his arms were still wrapped around Arachion's neck, and when he made the motion to make the signal, he snapped his neck and killed him. Due to his opponent willingly forfeiting the fight, Arachion was declared the winner posthumously. 4. Sisimnes Sisimnes was a judge who lived in Persia up until 525 BC. He lived up until the point when he was caught accepting a bribe and delivering an unjust sentence. This was when the king had him arrested and skinned alive. Granted, the manner of his death isn't as unusual as what would come afterward. Sisimnes' skin was used as a cover for the new judge's seat, usually depicted as hanging above the throne-like chair. This seat was put into place, and in some strange twist of fate, the judge who came to replace him would be his own son, who now sat in a chair decorated by the skin of his father while he continued to work. 5. Pythagoras of Samos Pythagoras was an ancient Greek philosopher. 
His political and religious teachings were influential enough to influence Plato, Aristotle, and in turn Western philosophy as a whole. He founded what some would call a school, but others would call a monastery. He was sometimes even represented as a divine figure. He came up with many religious laws for those in his school, including rules for sacrifice, how to honor the gods, and how to be buried. He placed a big importance on ritual purity, which included a lot of stranger rules, including forbidding followers from poking fires with swords, wearing wool, or even picking up crumbs. And for some reason, he declared beans as impure. At the end of his life, he and his followers rejected a proposed democratic constitution. Supporters of the constitution roused an angry mob and attacked the monastery, burning it down. It isn't agreed upon how exactly Pythagoras died, but it was reported that, while running from the mob, he came face to face with a bean field. Having declared them spiritually unclean, he couldn't bring himself to run through them. He stopped running, was caught, and was killed. Now to help me conquer this list, I brought in my friend Fox Akimbo. He has his own YouTube channel where he covers obscure trivia on really anything that you could think of. I'll put a link to his channel in the top of the description. So, take it from here. Hello everyone! Diatrip has so graciously let me on the channel today, and I have 10 weird and unusual deaths to read off for you guys, so let's get into things. First up we have Heraclitus of Ephesus. He was a pre-Socratic philosopher known as the Weeping Philosopher because he was just a very sad and lonely person. He was best known for his ideas that the world and the universe around it is constantly changing. He said, and I quote, No man has ever stepped in the same river twice. Very knowledgeable guy. His career as a philosopher was cut short, however, because in his later years he developed dropsy, which is a disease that builds up fluid inside the muscle. His career as a philosopher was eventually cut short because he developed dropsy. And what this is, is that it is a buildup of fluid inside the muscle. So some say that he cured his dropsy and then died to something else. However, others say that in an attempt to cure his dropsy, he covered himself in cow manure. The problem with this though was that a pack of wild dogs then devoured him. I'm not entirely sure if dogs do eat people covered in manure, but that is the tale of how he died, at least one of them. Themistocles was an Athenian general and politician who rose to power in ancient Athens. He was known as a man of the people and rebelled against the elite. He fought heavily outnumbered against Xerxes in the Battle of Salamis back in 480 BC and won a decisive victory for the Greeks. Here's the thing, he was probably exiled soon after for his views, but there is a tale. Tragically for Themistocles, there has been an old wives tale that he died drinking bull's blood because he didn't think it would be poisonous and it was. We know now that bull's blood is not poisonous, I don't believe, and so this is believed to be a myth, but who could say for sure? Perhaps there was something in that specific batch of bull's blood that killed him. The reasoning behind this misunderstanding is because there is a statue of Themistocles holding up a cup to the gods, so a lot of people thought that whatever was in the cup, he drank and died. Regardless, stories of the man's demise have been told and retold for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Aeschylus was an ancient Greek author and playwright known as one of the fathers of the Greek tragedy. He is just very revered in his field. However, how he died might actually be the most tragic of all, definitely the most ironic. He is thought to have died because a bird dropped a turtle on his head, this apparently being high up enough to kill him, and the reason why he was killed by this bird is because he wanted to be outside as much as possible because a fortune teller told him that he would be crushed by a house. So he was always like, okay, let's go outside. Only thing is, he died outside, so very unfortunate there. Kind of tragic, definitely ironic. And so the father of tragedy kind of became the father of irony as well. Empedocles of Archegas was yet another pre-Socratic philosopher best known for originating the cosmogonic theory of the four natural elements. 
And if there's one thing you need to know about this guy, is that he was mental. This man had a bit of a god complex, and the reason that we know this is because apparently he thought he was a god, and he wrote this in one of his poems, and then to prove it, he decided to jump into a volcano. This is the story that we've been told, or at least we were told this by Diogenes, <laughs> the philosopher who was also a bit batshit so who really knows if it was him or not when it comes to stories told by diogenes it's very important to kind of hold them with a grain of salt you know that guy was also a bit mental so who really knows if he jumped into mount etna fifthly we have sophocles another father of the greek tragedy I'm sure a lot of drama students would know him, and there are three ideas of how this man died. One of them was that he choked to death on an unripe grape. Very kind of bog standard Greek stuff, I'm sure. A second one, slightly more bizarre this time, was that he died of joy after hearing a positive response to his final play. The third one, and my personal favourite, was that he was so engrossed in a performance that he died delivering a monologue. He didn't take a breath and died of suffocation because he was just so intent on getting the words out that he died literally speaking. Very interesting man with a very interesting demise. Mithridates was a Persian soldier who was apparently killed in 401 BC. This is because apparently he embarrassed his king, Artaxerxes II, by boasting of killing his brother, and rival Cyrus the Younger. And the method of death this man had is absolutely abhorrent. He died by scaphism. And I have covered <laughs> scaphism on my channel before at Fox Akimbo. Scaphism is where you take someone, you put them like in a boat. I know the basics of it. And you cover them in milk and honey. You basically trap them and you cover them in milk and honey. And what this does is that the milk will go off and the honey will attract pests, and I'm talking days, weeks, maybe even a month, you will be stuck getting eaten alive by bugs and pests. You will be force-fed milk and honey to keep you alive. All the while, you will be getting eaten by maggots and flies. You won't be able to stop it, and it is an extremely gruesome death. For 17 days, Mithridates survived insect torture. This next story is about Democritus of Abdera and is given to us again by Diogenes. If you know anything about him, you will know that he might not be the most reliable source. But the story goes that Democritus died at 109 years old, so he was a very old man, and his sister had not fulfilled her religious obligations to the goddess Artemis, and this worried her. So for three days during the festival, Democritus told her to give him a loaf of bread and he held it under his nose. This is all while he is on his deathbed. And for some reason, we don't know why, the loaf of bread under his nose kept him alive for the duration of the holiday and he died very soon after. Diogenes tells us that the mere scent of this loaf of bread, perhaps there might have been some gods or goddesses at play, but as far as we know, the mere scent of this bread kept him alive for three days he would die as soon as the festival was over. Very quick one here, Antiphanes. There isn't too, too much known about his death, but people say that he was killed by a pear. Now, this would be a very easy way to besmirch your rival. If you didn't like someone, why not say that they died in a really embarrassing way? I don't know much about him, and I believe that it's known that this method of death was made way after the fact. But still, it kind of goes, people think that Antiphanes was killed by a pair. Agathocles, the king of Sicily and self-proclaimed tyrant. He is up next. He was a natural born leader of mercenaries and was actually quite a popular tyrant with the word kind of being more synonymous with people that have conquered at the time rather than someone that ruled with an iron fist and was evil like we might see today. He was actually loved by the people for the most part, which is kind of rare back in the day. And the rumours about his death are actually quite interesting. Some people think that he died of natural causes, but some ideas of his death are a little bit more nefarious because some people think that he was poisoned. And the murder weapon of which 
is actually very fascinating to me. People thought that he was poisoned with a toothpick, that he died, I guess, getting something out of his teeth and would, you know, that was the end of him. Details of his death are few and far between because the man lived 2,500 years ago, but nevertheless, the method of his death, as with all of these, are just so fascinating to me. Philip of Kos was an extremely studious man and was a scholar and a poet. He was a frail man in build, but nonetheless, Philip of Kos was extremely devoted to his work. So much, in fact, that a person named Athenius, I don't know if I'm pronouncing any of these right, but Athenius came out and said that he studied so hard, he simply wasted away and died. One minute he was studying arguments and the use of words, and the next, he just died. He was so devoted to his craft that he forgot to eat, he forgot to sleep, he forgot to drink, and he just wasted away and died. These stories, whilst perhaps embellished, are just so unique. And I think that the ancient Greeks had a really good way with trying to mystify the world, to take something that might be boring like normal life and just take it up to 11. Dying delivering a monologue, dying with a poison toothpick, dying because you're so at work that you just die. <laughs> It's really cool to me and just seeing the creativity that they come up with. You know, most of these people probably did die of natural causes, but why not make their death a bit more mystical? I don't know, maybe that's just me. And there we have it. Thank you guys so much for watching my portion of the video and thank you so much Diatrip for having me. I have my own channel, I am at Fox Akimbo. So please, if you like what you see, if you like this, please go subscribe there it'd be great to see you i usually do iceberg charts so if you like them have at it you know i've done a few historical videos myself but mainly i focus on the weird and wacky of the world kind of similar to this so if you like what you see come subscribe to me and you know that'd be very nice thank you very much back to me 16 zeno obsidium zeno was a hellenistic philosopher from cyprus he was the founder of the Stoic school of philosophy in around 300 BC. His manner of philosophy focused on goodness and peace of mind gained from living a life of virtue. Being as good as that sounds, his school of thought gained massive popularity and became one of the major schools of philosophy during the Hellenistic era, all the way up to even the Roman era. However, he met his end one day while leaving his school. While exiting the building, he stumbled, fell down, and broke his toe. In anger, he slammed his fist to the ground and recited a quote, I come, I come, why dost thou call for me? He held his breath and then died on the spot from a broken toe. Or at least something resulting from the broken toe, who knows. 17. Qin Shi Hong Qin Shi Hong was the founder of the Qin Dynasty and the first ever emperor of a united China. He was the very first in a line of emperors that would last for around 2,000 years. If you would assume that anything could take this man out, you would think it would be a rival faction, or an assassin, or something. And you'd be close with that assumption. There were many attempts made on Qin's life. The first was made when Qin was still the king of a smaller nation and not the emperor. The crown prince of a rival land, Yan, set up a plan to kill the king. He had two men go to visit the king to present him with two gifts a map, and the severed head of an enemy. When unwrapping the gifts, the men pulled out a dagger. They stabbed at the king, but missed, and the king was able to slash them back. Their plan fell apart when the king was able to slash and stab the assailants eight times. Soon after, both of the assailants were executed. How about the second attempt? This was made by a close friend of the first failed assailant. He came to play the loot for the king, a ploy to get close to him, when someone happened to recognize him. The king couldn't bring himself to kill such a talented musician, so he ordered his eyes poked out instead. He came back to play for the king again, but this time with heavy lead fastened to his lute. He swung the lute in an attempt to strike the king, but he completely missed, and was executed. Was there an attempt three, you ask? Yes. After Qin became the emperor, he conquered the Han, an aristocrat from the Han sold all of his belongings to hire a strongman assassin and build him a large metal cone. 
They hid in a bush while the king rode by in two carriages. The strong man threw the giant metal cone at the first carriage, shattering it. However, the king was actually in the second carriage, just in case of this exact sort of thing. This time, though, the assailants actually escaped despite a large manhunt. So what did kill him, you ask? Well, you could say it was his own fear of death that killed him. Let me explain. Getting up there in years, Qin Shi Huang started to fear his own oncoming demise. He started searching through the legendary elixir of life, a potion said to make the user immortal. He got his best alchemists on the job and had them whip up some mercury pills for him, something he thought would grant him more life. It did the opposite and granted him a lot less, meaning he died. Ironically, even to this day, his tomb can't be excavated due to the rivers of mercury inside and how dangerous they are. 18. Chrysippus of Soli Chrysippus was a Greek Stoic philosopher, again, living in about 200 BC. He was known to excel in many areas such as logic, ethics, and physics. However, none of his work has survived except in fragments. In the accounts of his death, it is noted that Chrysippus was drinking a load of undiluted wine at a feast. He was watching a donkey eat some figs, which cracked him up. He then yelled out, now give the donkey a drink of pure wine to wash down the figs, where he started laughing harder and harder until he finally collapsed dead, dying of laughter. And as far as these deaths have gone, this is one of the more favorable so far, if you ask me. 19. Eleazar Avaran The Maccabean Revolt was a Jewish rebellion against the Seleucid Empire and the Hellenistic influence on Jewish life, led by the Maccabees. It took place from around 167 to 160 BC. This era is fairly well known due to the story of the Maccabees being part of the Catholic Bible. The leader of the rebellion was a man named Judas Maccabeus, but this isn't about him. It's actually about his younger brother, Eleazar. Not a whole lot is known about him, aside from that he was a great warrior. He's fairly well known for his death, though, as it's even in the Bible itself. During the Battle of Beit Zechariah, he, according to the Bible itself, he killed men right and left, and they parted before him on both sides. He got under the elephant, stabbed it from beneath, and killed it, but it fell to the ground upon him and he died. So after doing a great job, he got so cocky that he decided to take on a war elephant by himself. He stabbed the elephant from underneath, and of course when the elephant died, it fell down, right on top of him, and smashed him. His death became a popular image of self-sacrifice during the Middle Ages. And 20. Portia. Portia was a woman who lived during the first century BC. She's most known for being the second wife of Brutus, the et tu Brutus man who killed Julius Caesar. Brutus divorced his first wife and married Portia, his first cousin, when she was still very young. It is said that the marriage was a way for Brutus to honor his uncle. She was very devoted to Brutus, to an extreme extent. She decided that she couldn't even trust herself at keeping his secrets, as she may give them away under torture. Due to this, she became dedicated to overcoming the feeling of pain. She wounded herself on the leg with a barber's knife to see if she could handle the pain, and ended up leaving it untreated for a day. Brutus was actually pretty impressed by the incident and vowed to not only confide in her, but to be a better husband as well. However, after killing Caesar, he had to flee while Portia remained. Historians disagree on how exactly she died. For a long time, it was believed that she swallowed hot coals and died. However, others felt that just the burning coals in the small room would have killed her with carbon monoxide poisoning. Who, who says it wasn't a combination of both? I mean, who knows? And that's the first 20 entries on this massive list. Thank you for watching the whole thing. I like being able to relax a bit and get a little more humorous with the whole thing. If you found this interesting and want to hear more on this list, uh, do let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to continue the series if there's enough interest, and I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of bizarre stuff comes up next.
Regular video on Friday, too, by the way. Consider this an extra. And don't forget to check out Fox's channel in the description below. Uh, if you could, drop a like, it really helps. Uh, subscribe if you want to see where this goes, and I will see you next time. I'd like to take a moment to shout out my top tier patrons on Patreon. Lonro, Itaya, Jewel Mavchan, Lori Tayaba, Kim Peek, Lux Alpaca, Charity, Skooky Maine, Foxlicity, Jackie, and Lavender Wise. Lavender Wise and Tracer Ferguson. Thank you, you guys are the best.